one of the things that I'm sure developers in Curator are put great care is in the rules that they produce is to make sure that they perform very well. They maximize the capabilities of the hardware that you have. And uh, I'm going to be talking about the performance of the rules that you will write because you need to keep some things in mind. And this is stuff that I have learned from my good friend Leopoldo Aguirre, also known as Polo, who is an expert on performance and, uh, and he works actually in support. So you may run into him in, in, in case that you uh, open a ticket on performance. Uh, but let's actually understand this from the sequence that the whole things happen. So it all begins with the logs uh, and also on the flows and they need to be collected and all these stages can happen in an all-in-one device is that all you have like in my demo system or it can be distributed as large customers do but this uh, if it's distributed this most likely will be an event collector type of device and here's where you talk well this device can process 40,000 EPSs right well, typically uh, on the collection, there's nothing you can do respecting the rule. This has to do with the throughput and the number of things that are sending logs, and that's simple to understand. But then the second stage comes, which is the parsing. And this is done by the DSM, right, or the parser. And this is all about uh, how the custom properties are extracted, how the categories are assigned, and all that good stuff. And believe it or not, the DSM has a performance measure on EPSs, right? I'm not going to cover this. I hope that I will be able to do a video with Polo uh, to cover these things in more detail and pass more information along. But uh, if a DSM is poorly written because the regex are not optimized or, you know, the, the way that the properties are extracted are not properly done, then you can have a... a a poor performing DSM and that it will limit the whole sequence of things that can actually happen and but I mentioned some of these in the parsing video series that when an event when a processor cannot uh, either parse or correlate those devices they they are sent to storage and, and they will not be firing rules or doing the other things that they normally do so again, that's on the parsing stage, and I'm not going to talk much about it because this is not a DSM. I don't some DSM videos, although no one with performance in mind. The next stage is where we focus the most in this video series, which is the correlation, where all those test conditions in the rules are evaluated, and this is what is called the custom rules engine. Right? Uh, Typically, these two stages happens on a distributed side on an event processor. The last stage of the travel of the logs uh, is really to go on their storage so they can be searched later. And there's a whole topic on performance searches and, and I did a video on QDI and how QDI can help you with that. But this is... Uh, like other SIEMs work, everything is based on searches. The curator is a real time thing, so at the minute, the second, the fraction of a second that the logs are received, they are processed and everything happens right there. Although you can always perform searches on those things later. If we take a look at the rule that we've been using in this video series, we see that there are a bunch of test conditions and all of them need to evaluate true or false in case that you have an unnot condition, right? Uh, in order for the rule to consider to be uh, all positive and firing the rule, that then if the rule fires an offense, because on the next uh, screen you ask it to do so, not all of them do, by the way, then you will say that my rule fire. And it, there is a very important consideration, and I have covered that lightly in the previous videos of this series but uh, the order in which you put the test condition is very important for performance reason at the very top meaning at the the first test or 
at most the second test that it gets evaluated because the rule can have very many of them you need to put the things that have the broader uh, you know reach so let me show you some examples of that so for example the category as we did on the first rule on this video series uh, is something very inexpensive and when I say expense that you don't need to pay anything for rules in Curita but I'm talking about expense in terms of the CPU mostly CPU but also memory this and you know the, the resources that you have in your uh, appliances whether they are you know physical virtual or on the cloud so the 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 brothers category uh, 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 scope I for example category is it's very light so w when we did our first rule say well if the category is this or that those are rules that do not cost much to curate to evaluate Another one is the log source type. I say, well, if these are Windows logs, uh, I want to make sure that I only process the DSMs that have been assigned to log sources that are for Windows, right? Uh, not anyone else. And you can be even more specific and say, well, uh, not only just Windows type, but this specific, you know, Active Directory log that I have. Other things that are broad and very inexpensive are context, as we show in some of the videos. This is local to remote, remote to local, things of that nature. Uh, the domain, those are things that can be put at the top of the condition because, number one, they will weed out things that are not pertinent to this rule, and second, they are inexpensive to evaluate. Further down, you should put those that have kind of a middle cost or Some examples of those are, for example, IP source, whether that comes on the flow or a log. There's some logs that have the source IP or destination IP, and particularly for flows, the port. I mean, those are things that are a little bit more expensive to evaluate, and they should come next to it. And then there are the most specific or costly type of test condition that you should leave at the very bottom so they only get evaluated actually, let me actually mark them in red uh, for example if you have a test condition that uses a regex well not only a regex is expensive but if the regex is poorly written it will be more expensive same thing if you have one of the rules that have AQ uh, you know event matches and then there's an AQL search again the search can be poorly done it can be you know for the last uh, two years or something like that so it can it can be very expensive on that anything that has a string matching in the rule of course it's going to cost far more than on any of the things that we have seen uh, above and one example that we did where stuff is not even parsed but is in in the payload contained and we did an example of that in one of the videos well that is very expensive because the processor needs to read kind of uh, the entire content of the payload of every message in order to see whether that test condition is actually there so those are the the order again put the least expensive things to the top and then you know progress your way down to make sure that these guys in here are only evaluated when specifically uh, needed and not anywhere else a, a, any other time now curator can help you in multiple ways and there's a particular setting that i want to talk about if you go under system settings on the admin tab and you click advance and you click uh, custom rule settings this enable performance analysis is false by default but if you enable it you're gonna see some very good things one is that in the rules and I'm gonna get in there in a second next uh, you're gonna get some 
analysis that the, that the tool is actually doing in telling you, hey, you know, this rule is too expensive. Uh, this custom property that you are looking for is too expensive. Uh, so you, you're going to get uh, that notification. But also this is going to generate some reports in the background that if you need to open a ticket for performance reasons, that will enable Polo or whoever else is going to be analyzing this to have additional data that he will not have to ask you uh, in detail. And that data gets generated the, the moment, the second that the problem occurs. So it, it, you don't have to reproduce the, the, the things to happen. A and these limits, uh, keep them, these are EPSs, but keep them, you know, uh, in, in default. I wouldn't be messing around with this. Uh, so and again, there will be you will be dealing with the performance expert if you need to open a ticket because you get that uh, that type of notification. And if you go to the Q radar, once you have enabled that, you're gonna get two areas. One is that when you open any rule, you're gonna see this performance analysis and you will get some some data here. I don't have it because I just enabled these and I'm not being firing this is a demo system so I, I, the system doesn't have enough information uh, to provide me statistics about it and also you will get a performance bar in here actually I, I did get some uh, some information here about some rules that are not performing very well if I sort these by performance we see that I have some problem with some UBA rules and you get red yellow and green uh, type of indication but again i haven't been firing enough of this so i encourage you to run this and uh, i think i remember hearing from polo that uh, this does not cause performance impact that it has been very well written in order to minimize the impact on your system so i would say that I would encourage you to enable it uh, in order to make sure that you know where you are. When you are getting performance problem, you should be getting notifications in here. And I have one. For example, I have seen I've seen this every time I change a rule because the rule gets re-evaluated, it keeps coming back telling me, in fact, I can click here view old and I can actually click in here and I have a problem with one of my rules and I need to investigate what is actually happening. Uh, if you were to have performance problem because a DSM is, or a custom rules uh, or a uh, custom property is too expensive or, or a rule is, is, is too expensive, you will get a notification and the details in here. Uh, and then when you go into that uh, rules that I'm that I'm here in the back, you will be able to see more details of it. So that's where you will get that. Your best friend here should be QDI. That's a great application that will give you and whoever is going to be providing you support more details about every one of the appliance and the performance and the memory and you know the who is doing expensive searches and we say who is the actual user who is running these expensive searches is this a rule or is a user performing a search all those things uh, QDI is uh, your best friend also remember that uh, in the first video of this series, we had is that, that case that I call a mystery in which we have a false positive rule that actually block the execution of the evaluation of the rest of the, of the actual rules. So that, what, that was a, a unique case and that was the one I saw was for Windows events only. So I hope that this will give you some idea of how to keep performance in mind when you create your custom rules and your best friends are not only QDI and all these settings but those guys like Polo in support that will be happy to help you pinpoint not every performance problem has to is resolved with getting bigger hardware uh, guys like Polo often figures out uh, that you know that of course you with more hardware you can always uh, throw more money at the problem and get it fixed but sometimes that is not the case and, and I've seen these guys uh, doing a, a very thorough job and investigating and providing you the reason uh, how to, uh, why you have a particular performance problem. But if you keep all these things that we have said in mind, the custom rule you create should behave 
good enough so you don't have to call the guys like Polo. 